Hello folks and welcome back to Medieval Total War. I am Kana Step and this is going to be part 14 of my early campaign where I'm playing as Aragon. And in the last episode I was able to push the Elmahads out of Granada and I'm going to see if I can try to get a ceasefire with them because I would like to eventually trade again with them at some point. In fact I don't know if I was trading with them before but I'm getting enough boats in the water now and I'm covered pretty much the entire northern part of the Mediterranean. I still need to sneak up into the Aegean and the Black Sea, but I've pretty much covered, yeah, like I said, the entire north side of the Mediterranean. And at this point, I don't really need to go down into this southern part because this is all held by the Elmaheads. So there's no point in holding the, you know, Gulf of Sidra or the Gulf of Gabes or the African coast or the Barbary, co uh, Barbary coast until I, you know, am friends with the Elmaheads or at least, you know, not at war with the Elmaheads. So, for now, I can start focusing on sending my boats back up into the northern part of the map. I can hit up the um, North Sea and the Skagrak and the Baltic Sea for a few more ports up there. And my my treasury or my income's looking pretty gosh darn good. I'm making over three grand per year. That feels very, very nice. Now, I was able to deal a decent little blow to the Almaheads in the last turn. However, they still have this heir here, this five-star general. He's pretty good. He's pretty good, but he does only have three loyalties, so I'm wondering if maybe another defeat in my hands, maybe he'd start to become disloyal, maybe we can get, get another Elmahead Civil War. I don't know, but for now I'm going to see if I can try to get that ceasefire as I was saying. Now, as far as what I'm doing in the north, I, I really feel like I should start getting some more soldiers here on my northern border, because France, I mean, their armies are not too strong, but there is a lot of them, and... I mean, we're, we're friends, I think, right? We are friends. Yes, we are friends. And the French are at war with the Germans and the English, so they have their hands full, you would think. So, I still feel like I do want more soldiers up there. The fact that I have less than, you know, a full stack in Navarre does not feel good at all. I do, however, kind of feel like I'm running out of territories to train soldiers in, because this is the difference between having a... You know, for example, a campaign like Aragon, where I have Spain and that's it. And then I'm also playing the Almaheads, where I have these extra four territories where I can train things at. And in this case, I'm feeling a little bit hampered by the fact that I only have Spain. Of course, I, that is my own doing. I could very well take the Almaheads territories, just so that I could, you know, have more space to uh, train stuff in. But I don't want to play two campaigns that feel exactly the same. I want this one to be a little bit different. So in this case, I am building boats here in Aragon and Valencia. And I'm going to need that switch. I'm going to need to switch that over eventually because Aragon is a province that does have iron deposits, which is going to help me build. Is it called a metalsmith? I can't quite remember, but it's a building that gives me a plus one attack for all of my units. And I don't want to be building boats from this province. I, I want my boat building to be in the provinces that don't have iron deposits, like Valencia, Cordoba, and eventually Portugal. In Portugal, however, I'm still a little ways away, I think, before I can build boats. Yeah, I'm still, I'm, so I'm going to be building that trading post so I can trade stuff. And then the salt mine. And then I need to build a keep. And then I need to build that um, that boat yard. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite a ways away before I can build boats here in Portugal. Yeah, and then in Lyon, I am rushing towards getting a chapter house so that I can build a crusade marker. But I'm still in the middle of building a keep right now. So it's going to be quite a while before I can really train anything else here. I can train Agenites, which is really, really nice. And I think that's because this building was left over. The Horse Breeders Guild? I, I don't know if I can get that with a Tier 1 Fort. That must have been left over from the Spanish. And in Castile, I can potentially train better units, but I this might have been a mistake. I kind of panicked and I was like, man, if in case I can't get the chapter house in time here in Leon, I need a I need a church here in Castile that's built up so that I can build a chapter house if I need to. But that might have been a mistake. Maybe what I should have been focusing on is, you know, buildings that allow me to build better soldiers, such as the... I don't even have a spear maker here, you know? Yeah, or even at like a boyer's workshop. Well, I can't... No, the boyer's workshop would have been useless because it doesn't allow me to train anything better until... Um, yeah, this... this So this is the way it goes. Like, I can train up archers up until I believe the year 1205 and then we switch on to the high period of this game so it goes early high and late 
and you can train different units depending on what period of the game you're in. So the next archer unit that's available is going to be the crossbowman. But I can't train crossbows until the 1205. That is, even if I do have the Boyer's Workshop, I can't do anything with it until the year 1205. So it's kind of pointless to build this right now. And I, it's the same for a few other buildings as well. It's a really unique uh, building chain, honestly, here in Medieval 1. It is really interesting that, for example, if I go over to here... So like you see here in Lyon, I need to build the basic militia building, the town watch, that allows me to build up... Um, urban militia, and that's it. You know, pretty crappy unit, honestly. Um, but I need to build this town watch before I can even build a basic spear maker or basic uh, boyer. And then those buildings branch off into into allowing me to build different things as well. So, for example, a boyer allows me to build a siege engineer. However, a spear maker, I believe, I believe this is the building that allows me to build a swordsmith so that I can eventually train feudal meta arms. I think that's how it works, but yeah, in any case, it's very, it's interesting, it's very interesting. And I don't think the armor becomes available until you either build a boyer or a spear maker. In this case, I have the boyer, the basic boyer, here in Castile. So, it is a very interesting uh, tech, tech, you know, uh, tech tree here in Medieval 1. It's, it's a little funky for sure, but I kind of like it, honestly. But in any case, I think for now, I am training up soldiers here in Cordoba. I am still at war with the Almohads. I think if they attacked me with this army that's here in Morocco, if they attacked Granada or Cordoba, I think I would win either battle. They don't really have much here. Archers, like have peasants, and then their one healthy unit of Gulam bodyguards, and that's it there. They do have some more soldiers here, full stack, but it's just mostly peasants and archers, honestly, so I'm not too worried about this. Obviously, the king is here. But, you know, he's at least a turn away, so I'm not too worried about him. For now, I can defend against this if I have to. And I am tempted, I, I probably should start sending all of the soldiers that I trained from Cordoba up to Aragon and Navarre, just so I have more up here. Because right now, I basically have mercenaries hanging on to Aragon and, and Navarre. And speaking of which, I was looking at this before. That's a pretty healthy group of mercenaries. If I wanted to train all of these guys, that would be really nice. Yeah. That's pretty healthy, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to just completely, you know, uh, that would just wipe out all of my income. You know, <laughs> the upkeep for those guys would be tremendous. So for the time being, I do want to keep focusing on building boats. However, I did just realize something. So I can build assassins now or train assassins down in Valencia. And since I, I'm not, I haven't begun building this boat yet here, I'm thinking about canceling that and building just one assassin and then going back to boats. It's only going to take one turn for an assassin, and that assassin is going to allow me to kill off these emissaries that are hanging out in Cordoba that belong to the Almohads, and these emissaries that belong to the French that are hanging out on my northern border as well. Just because, you know, less people spying on me, the better. So, we will see if that one, one assassin can uh, get the job done with killing off these uh, annoying little agents, and we'll go from there. Well, what's this? The Almohad Caliph wants to send an emissary to me. Well, sir, I just sent an emissary to you, so yes. I would love to have an alliance. It's funny that they can just skip the whole ceasefire part and go straight to the alliance where I have to like do a two-step process. But yes, yes, let's be friends. And, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> and they've accepted my offer of a ceasefire. Okay, so that's maybe that's how it worked. They accepted the ceasefire and then I then they proposed an alliance. That's <laughs> that's kind of funny. <laughs> All right, yeah, cool. Cool. I mean with that being said, they did just move an entire stack that was here in Algeria to the border here in Morocco, which is definitely a little bit concerning, but eh, I think for now I do need to send some soldiers, as I was saying, up to my northern border here in Aragon. So let's do that for now. Make sure that I have enough archers. Do I have enough archers here? Yeah, that feels like enough. And then two, uh, let's, let's bring an archer down to Granada. Because I'm no longer at war with the Yamalheads, I don't need my princess spying this far abroad, so how about you come back here and maybe, maybe let's get you married. There's a general here who has two stars, which isn't too fabulous, but you know, maybe we can bump him up, bump him up a little bit. Um, this is yeah, more of an experiment here, because one of my uh, viewers did tell me that by marrying princesses to generals that increases their loyalty, which uh, that part I knew, but he also was kind of saying that 
And through that, you you essentially will get more stats and more vices and virtues from people that uh, you you get married. Uh, so maybe, yeah, maybe we can work on that with this guy. You know, he's super loyal. He's a little bit pious, but two-star command. We'll work with it and see if we can turn him into anything here. So, yeah, marry her off. I mean, how old is she? She's, uh, yeah, 31. She's, she's getting up there. So she might be becoming, I think, when 35 is the the cutoff point for them. So yeah, getting getting her married should be good. And then I do have my assassin. So who's first? You know what? I think I think the French are first. Let's go after this French emissary here. And that's gonna be an 83% chance of killing him, so hopefully that goes through. And then after that, yeah, I'll just go after this Elmahead, you know, <laughs> emissary who just talked to my king and delivered me the uh the good news, but you know what? It's tough being an tough, tough being an emissary, you know. Down here in Granada, I'm thinking about getting a silver mine complex for some extra money. There, it's going to be yeah, they're pretty expensive, but I think it's definitely worth the money. Fourteen hundred, and yeah, it's going to give me 156 florins. Right now, the basic one is yeah, 78. So this is almost doubling, doubling the amount. So let's get that in, nice and early. Also, you know, while we're not at war with the Elmaheads, because. Yeah, if they attack me in the middle of me making that silver mine complex, then I've wasted that whole 1,400 foreign, so that would suck. How long is it going to take to build? It's going to take four years. Okay, that's not too bad. And then down here in Cordoba, I have finished that, uh, I always forget what they're called, the shipwright. And in this case, so this is what I was just talking about. I can finally start training boats here in Cordoba, and that's going to allow me to ship my troop production up here to Aragon, for example. Now, I don't have... Oh, no, I do. I do have the armor here in Aragon. Sweet. So, yes, this is where I should be training soldiers here in Aragon for that plus one armor. So, here, get rid of you guys, and then let's start training or building boats here in Cordoba. And then Aragon, cancel you. And then what do we want? Um, Suppose uh, spears are so good. Feudal sergeants is just, it's just a staple. It really is. So, let's get some nice armored feudal sergeants going there. And that's going to feel really, really good. Just to have a wall of spears holding Navarre and Aragon. Now, is there anywhere else that I want to start building or training stuff? Archers might be good. Archers are always pretty good. Other than that, though, oh, yeah, I can start building another building here in Cordoba. So what do I want here? I suppose I could just start going for the dockyard because I believe I did have the, the compass event in this campaign so that I can start working on my deep water ships, although it doesn't say that I can build them yet, which is kind of odd. I know I'm building, I started building a dockyard somewhere else, I believe, yeah. Valencia and Aragon are both working on some dockyards. Yeah, I, it's, it's weird that it doesn't tell me that I can build those boats, because I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can. Didn't, didn't that, that event not happen yet in this campaign? I mean, in any case, I guess I'll go for it. It's only 600 florins, so I can afford that. I mean, improved farmland would be good as well, because the farmland in Cordoba is quite good. If we go in here to the economy panel, and then go to Cordoba, and then look at right there, it says farming income, and it's making 496. And that's off of just one farming upgrade. So off of the second tier would be pretty good as well. Yeah, let's get this. Yeah, let's do the farming upgrade first, and... And then, yeah, let's just start with that, and we'll go from there. I am also going to be using this time to send some troops from my southern borders up to these northern provinces where they can be retrained. Up here to Aragon so that they can get more armor, but also because these units are a little bit damaged as well. And because we are not at war with the Elmaheads, hopefully this little bit of respite gives me, give, gives me this opportunity to send these units, you know, up north and then back down south to come back and protect my borders here, so... Hopefully I'm not attacked in this interim right here, because if I am, I'm going to be caught a little bit unprepared. This army here in Morocco, I mean, it's a double stack. It's pretty scary. Mostly archers and peasants. I feel like I've killed most of the calf. I mean, there's a couple units of calf left, but... The king is still in Algeria, so the only unit of heavy calf is the sun. It is potent, though, but still. Yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they could win. I feel like Granada's pretty good, but Cordoba could be a little bit, a little bit on the vulnerable side if the Elmaheads decided to attack. So hopefully I can get these units back down south 
fast enough to deter any potential attacks. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Some uprisings going on in Byzantine territory here in Rhodes. I like that, and looks like the French are the richest. Wow, that's kind of surprising actually, because I'm, I'm making a lot of money. The Byzantine Empire has died from an illness, but there is always going to be an heir. And in this case, my heir is mature, so now I have two heirs. Alright. Trading post is complete, so I should start making some money now from Portugal. And the church is completed here in Castile, so now I can start focusing on actual uh, troop producing buildings. And yes, the French have declared a crusade on Tripoli, so I'm not too worried about that. My crusade goal is Antioch, so as long as no one takes that, I should be fine. And yeah, so that... That one uh, general did marry my daughter, Don Felipe Lerma, has wed my daughter and is stationed. His station has strengthened his loyalty to his country and to me. All right. Now it looks like, yeah, two people are at war, the French and the Egyptians. Yeah, I'm sorry, Egypt. I have to go to the French. The French. The, um, they're my neighbors, so I, I have to. <laughs> the French, the French only have one ally and it's me. So let's see, do you wish to remain allied to the French? Yes, I do. And then my prince only got one trait, and it's secret blackmailer. Which is not great, because that means that eventually it's going to become blackmailer once his secret is found out. And then he's going to lose loyalty to me, I'm pretty sure. However, it's looking like he's a pretty gosh darn good general. Let's go take a look at him. Yeah, five star general. Damn, alright. Yeah, five stars, four dread. Free piety and a bunch of loyalty. So even if he loses some loyalty, he should be fine. Yeah, nice. He's a good one. He is a good one, but he is not my heir. My heir is right here, Prince Gark. Yeah, it's not not as good. Not as good as Ferdinand, that's for sure. Um, what I can do. Hmm. How much how many royal knights does the French have up here? So oh god, okay. So yeah, they do have like two and then three. Zero in Toulouse, but then they have three here. Hmm. It, it's really tempting to send some royal knights down to the south, because I just have this one unit of royal knights down here. Uh, Don Alfonso Velasquez. And he's good. He's brave beyond belief. Plus three valor, plus three morale. So despite the fact that he's only three stars, which is solid, and he has, his loyalty is not great either. Uh... I mean, DeFore's okay, I guess, but yeah, I would like another general down here, but I also feel like I need to be keeping, you know, if if I if the French have three royal knights in Aquitaine, then I should probably have three royal knights here in Aragon. And come on, France, like, what the hell are you guys doing? Like, don't, don't, don't stack up on my borders, okay? You're fighting two different wars. The Germans are beating you in Saxony, like, yeah, you're taking England. Good, good for you, but like, get off my borders, guys, for real. For realsies. You're scaring the piss out of me. And speaking of scaring the piss out of people, looks like my... Yeah, so this is the thing. I do want to cancel my assassin's mission to hunt that emissary because that emissary left my province and now I don't want my assassin to chase off into enemy territories and get caught by a border fort. Because if we look... Okay, none of these provinces have border forts. That's, that's fine. The border watchtower, this one right here, is the one that simply spies in other territories. But it's the border fort that will catch enemy agents in your own territories. So you do have to watch out for them in, uh, in you know, when you're sending your uh, assassins and your spies into enemy territories. Now, in this case, I simply want to protect my own borders. And by that, I'd mean kill the, kill the enemy agents that are in my borders. So I'm going to come down here and try to kill this emissary. Ooh, he's Valor too, so I only have a 66% chance of killing this guy, but let's go for it, see if we can kill him. He, he's, for all I know, is probably the guy that got me that peace treaty with the Elmaheads, but you know what? It has to be done. I don't want you spying, sir. Let's bring these guys into the keep here and start training them up. And now that I have a son of age, you know what that means? Yes, it is time to find him a wife. And you know what? The Danes were so nice to allow me to marry their other daughter. So let's see. I'm pretty sure this is the Danes, right? Yes. Let's see if they will allow me to marry this one. Because, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be nice to get Ferdinand a wife. Nice and early. Because Prince Gark has a wife. My king has a wife. And I think I do have other sons on the way. 
Prince Pedro, Prince Enrique. Yeah, I got I got a few more, so keep them coming. Keep them coming. And now that I have my trading post finished in Portugal, this is what I'm talking about. Trading income, 992 florins, and that is the tier one trading post. Oh, that feels so good. That feels so, so good. If we look at some of these other provinces, like Cordoba, I believe, has a tier two. Yeah, so Cordoba, tier two, they're making 1,500, almost 1,600 florins. It's so, so good. And I don't even have ships everywhere. That's not even like, that's just, you know, the northern Mediterranean. That's not even counting way up here. And in addition to that, more ports will be built by the AI, you know? So that's just going to go up and up and up right now. It's feeling pretty gosh darn good, but once I get up here to the Black Sea, two, three more ports here in the Black Sea. Once I get up here to the north, uh, there's not, okay, there's not as much as I thought there would be. There's one port in the Baltic and then one port in Skagorak, and that's, that's actually a little bit disappointing. <laughs> Alright, come on guys, uh, whoever's up here, Poland, Danes, Russia, please, get it, get it going guys, get, get your shit together. And here's that. French Crusade, who was heading down to Antioch, they built one in the British Isles. Interesting. Huh. So is it coming from Wessex? I want to know. Like, is the chapter house in Wessex or Wales or, or Mercia? Huh. I, I do want to... Where's my other emissary? Here you are. Here you are. Go find out where that chapter house is. Because I want to know where that is, just in case, if later on in the campaign, if I need to end a French crusade, for example, if I want to lower the king's influence, then I want to know where that chapter house is. If it's on a province that borders the ocean, easy. I can come in, smash it, I can land my soldiers, smash that chapter house, and get out. If it's inland, it's a little bit trickier. You have to kind of actually march through some territories and whatnot. But yeah, if he has a chapter house that he's using that's in the British Isles and not like, you know, inland, phew, he, he made a mistake. So that's something I do want to keep an eye on. Although there is a French fleet on the water, which is a little bit surprising considering that I thought that they were worth everyone by now. I mean, they're, they're not. They're only worth, you know, two factions, but... Is it uh, three, three now? Yeah, there are no more three factions. Oh dear. The French are just, they're so troublesome. They're just so, so troublesome. Now here in Castile, let's start working on those actual military buildings, such as the Spear Maker, so I can get some basic spearmen, and some Spanish javelin men here in Castile. And then after that, I suppose armor, should I get an armor or should I get... I, what I think I should do is work up to the Spear Maker's Workshop so I can get the Feudal Sergeants and then an armor just so I can at least get some, you know, decent spearmen on the field before I start teching them up with some nice, nice good stuff. Although I do have the church already here, so I will be getting plus one morale for all of my soldiers that are trained here in Castile. But that's probably going to be it for this turn, so let's end it and see what happens. <laughs> Alma heads, man oh man, you guys chose violence, didn't you? And, I mean... I guess, luckily, let's see, I mean, yeah, so I, <laughs> yeah, I did kill your emissary, sure, so I killed their rank 2 emissary, but then they decided to invade me with a decent sized force, I, they do outnumber me, well, let's see what they brought, yeah, so they did, they brought their heir, their five, it's a five star general, that's tough, that's definitely tough, and they did bring some Nubian spearmen, which are pretty, you know, solid spearmen, other than that, their infantry is pretty crappy. They have some peasants with actually some armor upgrades. And yeah, a few other units with armor upgrades. You know, they're, they're archers, one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half units of archers. And then two units of light calf, plus a unit of Berber camels as well. It's, it's going to be an annoying army. It's going to be a real archer, archery, skirmishy kind of army. And let's see, do I actually have the archers required to fend this off? I don't know. I don't know. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So I do have six archers. If I can get a hill position, that could be good. My front line is marginally better. I mean, no, it's better. I have two feudal sergeants and then one feudal men at arms. This unit alone can cut through, like, all of the peasants and their Nubian spearmen. I suppose this should work. My archers, let's see, what do they have again? One, two, three, four, five. They have 
five and a half plus the Berber camels, and then I have a decent six. So it's close, but if I can get a hill position, I should have to have the advantage there. I do have two units of peasants though, so that's not that's not good. And yeah, so genetes, I do have two units of genetes. Genetes are good. But I'm pretty sure I have a feeling they would lose in a head up battle to like if they wanted to charge their Saharan Cav, their camels, and their Gulam bodyguards at or yeah, the Gulam bodyguards at me. I would struggle with this. This is going to be a tough fight for sure. This is going to be really tough. So let's see if I can get lucky with the hill position and see uh, see what I can do here. This isn't ideal. I will tell you that. But I'm going to be a little bit close to the forest. So if I kind of change my mind about this whole situation here and decide to kind of go over the forest to hide from their archers and their cavalry, I can do that. That it's It's not a bad idea, honestly. Like the units that have the best chance of beating me is their cav, you know, their Saharan cav. Their archers I'm not too worried about, honestly. You know what? Yeah, I've, I ch I've changed my mind. I wanna go to the forest. <laughs> this isn't ideal. Yeah, I, I'm afraid this Mangonel crew is not gonna have a fun time here. And my army is pushed up against the fence so they can't really quite all fit into this forest. But once I click this, hopefully I have enough time to get in position here. Yeah, it's not a uh, it's not a classical position where, you know, hill uh, forest on a hill kind of thing. It's more of a just kind of cram everyone into the forest and hope that it works kind of deal. So that's what we're going for here. Get everyone in the forest. I really do think that their best chance of beating me is going to be rushing me with their cavalry. So let's get everyone in this forest because these trees are going to give really, really big penalties on, uh, yeah, their Saharan Cav, their Gulen Bodyguards, all that, all that fun stuff. And here they come. First, first up is going to be the Berber Camels trying to skirmish with, me, skirmish with me a little bit, but my archers should outrange them. So I have two on this side. Yeah, two archers firing into this unit of Berber Camels. So, so we should be able to do some damage to them. They are really big targets, so I can't imagine my archers having too much trouble hitting these guys. And if they want to come closer to my spears, you know, I will take that charge for sure. Now, let's see, what do we have here coming through the forest as well? I can't see quite too good. Saharan so Cap, okay. That is a-okay. Now, I have this group here on this flank just in case they do come in, but I might want to sweep this little group of spearmen and archers around on this flank. You know what, actually I'm going to do that right now. Let's bring you guys up here. Because I feel like, yeah, I feel like the attack's obviously going to be coming from this side. That way if I need some guys sweeping around on the flanks, I can have that ready right away. Now as far as my center, I might want to kind of change their facing a little bit as well. And maybe do something more like this. Now my mango now can start shooting and... Yeah, we'll see if it gets any damage done. My genetes are basically up here kind of like protecting it, but... Yeah, not not really. I'm a little bit worried about my genetes, honestly. They're kind of out in the open here. And yeah, we'll see if my, my mangonel can do any damage here. I mean, if they don't threaten it, they might my mangonel might just be getting free shots. Ooh, what, what are my field sergeants doing? What are you guys doing? You guys see... What, what was that? Guys, get back here. Hold, guys, hold. Yeah, now they're trying to charge into my archers here because my spearmen got out of position. And let's see, spearmen here come in and got spearmen here. And let's see, Spanish Unite is probably... Hmm, do I want you to come down here? They're running... Okay, they're running off. So I should be able to kill this one unit of Saharan Cav right here, which is going to feel really good. And yeah, this unit backed off and they're leaving, they're leaving the other unit to die here in the woods. And that's really good. That's what I want. I will take off their cavalry one piece at a time. Bring urban militia back up here. And what do we got? Archers coming in. Yeah, it's going to be curious to see if the archers actually do want to try to fight. The Gulen bodyguards are right there, so we need these spearmen up right here. And yeah, let's see. Are they going to take, take the charge? Spearmen. I really want my spearmen to take the charge. And then I want my Gulen bodyguards to... Or I want my Elmhead Urban Militia to come in and support here. 
And then let's get my feudal meta arms as well. They can cut through all of these peasants. Speaking of peasants, I can use some of my peasants on this side. Ooh, they might be going after my peasants. Yeah. Oh god. Oh god, this is gonna hurt. Let's see, get feudal sergeant on this side to come around because I need you guys to help out against these golem bodyguards. And then I need my genetes to basically come down here and charge downhill into their golem bodyguards. Hopefully we can get something done there. Let's see, feudal sergeants on this side charge into their Saharan cab. And do we have everyone engaged? Not quite. I feel like I want to get more peasants thrown in on this side. And then peasants here tra trapping into their uh, golem bodyguards. And let's have my genetes try to throw their javelins here into their golem bodyguards. And then where's my other unit of golem bodyguards? You. You, sir. Yeah, throw your javelins. They're down to 13 men, so they are dying. Yeah, in the forest versus my spears versus peasants versus javelins. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of damage to the Gulen bodyguards, but ooh, ooh, this is not good. They have some Heron Cav into my, okay, into my spears. That is good. Never mind. That's a good thing. But they are bringing in a flanking unit of Berber camels, and on this side, I'm kind of running out of men to plug the gaps here. I don't think I have any reserves left. No, I do not. I have the unit of archers here that probably could be moved up. And how is this? Is this. Is it down to like one Gulen bodyguard? Man, he's still holding on, isn't he? If we can kill him, that'd be great because he's a five star general. He's the reason why this army's still fighting right now. Because otherwise, things are going pretty well for me. But if we can kill him or get him to run away, that could potentially swing things in my favor. But until then, this army is going to fight until the better end. My archers up here are. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, my spears on this side are running away. That's really, really unfortunate. Oh, that's really unfortunate. They broke to camels, basically. Camels and peasants. Yikes. And on this side, my guys are fighting hard, but where's my feudal men at arms? And why can't my... Why can't I beat this freaking... Man, my guys are running away here as well. Oh, no. No, so we got... Yeah, we got their Gulan bodyguard down to... Is it one guy, basically? We just can't kill this one guy, can we? No, that's so frustrating. That's so frustrating. Yeah, my general's running away. That's, that's, that's probably going to be it. That's probably going to be it. I thought we were doing pretty gosh darn good there. And, yeah, getting them in the forest was the good idea. It was the right, right play. Your general has been captured. Yep, my, my general's been captured. Yeah, that's really too bad. Oh, that's really, really too bad. Yeah, I thought I had a chance there. I really thought I did, but they just, uh, yeah, they overcame me. They had, a, they had a beast of a general. He wouldn't, he would not give up. So that's probably going to be it. I, as far as my reinforcements go, there's really not much. There's really, really not much. So I think with everyone running away, I should probably just exit out of this. Although I could kill these remaining 20 men, because I, apparently I did capture some people. So let's kill them. And that's probably going to be it for this battle here. Yeah, I did kill 479, and I lost 457. So yeah, it was, it was close. It was close. Oh, that's too bad. It is too bad. So I lost Cordoba. God damn. That's really, really tough. What was I just building there? Was it the farmland, was it? I can't quite remember. Yeah, Cordoba lost. Yeah, that's a that's a tough loss. I am going to pay for my men. So I have I'm gonna pay for 169 men. I'm gonna pay 760 florins. And uh, yeah, okay, yeah, this is what you get, the Alma Heads. So they're having public uh, public loyalty issues here in Morocco because they don't have any armies there. And so now they're having bandits, Muslim bandits, uh, going to be attacking Morocco in the next turn. Yeah, that's what you freaking get. So now the Italians, uh, their doge has died and the heir has taken over command. And then, let's see, so what the, the Germans want an alliance. They, yeah, I'm sorry guys, but you're, you're fighting the French and I need, I need the French on my side. So, let's see, sent an emissary, yeah, brings us. Yeah, I gotta turn that one down. And the Danes, yeah, the Danes are my friends. Awesome. Sweet. I love to see it. And I've given birth to, my wife has given birth to a daughter. She'll be on the way in 15 years. And let's see. The Italians have decided to stay on my side as opposed to, yeah, he's, he's broken his uh, treaty with the Elmaheads, which is uh, pretty nice. All right, what do we got? Murderous temper, plus two dread, minus two piety. We have a coward. Oh, poor guy. My, minus nine morale. Yikes. 
and then captured plus three morale and then minus three or minus one command. Yeah, okay, so that's interesting because now I'm in a position where the Elmahead armies have kind of gotten behind me, right? Now I can simply just bring this army up from Granada to come up here to Cordoba and fight that. However, they can simply run away back to Morocco. It's just one unit of naphtha throwers. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, that's interesting. It looks like, oh yeah, the Elmahids have lost Cyrenasia as well. Oh dear, they are not doing well at all. Gosh, yeah. So once this army is dealt with, I mean, yeah, yeah, there's only one of one left, but he has eight valor. That's why he just couldn't freaking die. He's just a Jedi Knight. Oh man. Okay. Well, that's up. That's fine. I can still deal with this. My army's here in Granada. I can deal with this. My peasants can hang out in Granada, and I can come up here and finish the job. In fact, what I could do is bring down some of these mercenaries to really help out. Yeah, I, I think maybe I should. At this point, I would like armies on my borders just to dissuade the my neighbors from attacking me, right? Because if I had enough armies here, they wouldn't have done that. The fact is, they had like two armies in Morocco, and if they can single out which province they're going to attack, they found, you know, their opportunity. And if I had two armies, and that was it. If I just had two armies in each province, then they wouldn't have attacked me. And the fact is, now I'm losing, you know, all of that income from... Cordoba, which I was like, I think it was like two grand. I'm losing that. So I think it's worth it to pay for some mercenaries in the short term to free up Cordoba and really teach the Elmaheads a lesson here. Yeah, let's just buy everything. Buy everything. A lot of good stuff here. A lot of good stuff. You and then I don't need the artillery, but that will do. And then, yeah, let's bring down what we're, let's bring down all these guys. You to Cordoba, and then you maybe, no, you stay here. With these mercenaries and this force that was holed up in this castle, this should be enough to drive off the Elmaheads. I don't even think I'm going to need to use this army that's here in Granada. They can hang out here, they can stay here, and yeah, I can deal with these Elmaheads with just my mercenaries and my garrison. Now, do I have enough time in this episode to actually get this fight in? I think I do, so... Without further ado, let's just get in with do it. Let's actually bring down... You know what? Let's bring some more genitales down. Why not? Let's drop a save here and then end this turn. And I don't want to end another episode with Elmheads in my territory. So let's let's solve this. Let's figure this out. It looks like the Elmheads might actually be, I don't know, going extinct because um, they're having issues in their own territory and they're not dealing with that before they're dealing with me. So... They're having, they're having some issues. And the Egyptians are doing well. Go go Egypt, you know? Go, guys. You got this. And, yeah, so the Elmaheads did retreat from Cordoba. That's to be expected. Yeah. And... What? Oh, come on. My, that's my territory. My assassin got caught and killed by enemy bodyguards while he was in Cordoba because the Elmaheads occupied that province for one freaking turn. What? That's that's crazy because like wait, does that mean that the Elmaheads have spies already? Because spies are the only unit that can capture assassins, right? Unless they can assassins counter spy? Man, that is wild. Man, oh okay. Poor guy. Salt mine has been completed here in Portugal. Spear makers finished in uh Leon, was it? And then what do we got? Irritable, loyal, pretty standard stuff. All right, so Cordoba's back in my possession. And honestly, I, I am very, very tempted to come over here and just smash the armies and really teach them a lesson. But I mean, then again, I don't, that's the thing. I don't want to kill them. I do want to keep them just like this. I want to keep them here because frankly, if I, I'm fine with the Egyptians going strong and like, you know, beating the Byzantines, but if the Egyptians start looking in this direction and start thinking, all right, let's go this way, that's what I don't want. I want the Elmaheads to be this nice buffer for me. This nice, you know, weak but not too weak buffer between me and the Egyptians. And I don't want to have to keep going to war with you. So I think 
what I need to do is do what I was just saying, which is keep two stacks in Granada and Cordoba, and then I'll be fine, right? Now, I do have to reassign all of these titles that I have for for Cordoba, the Duke of Cordoba, the Lord Chamberlain, and then the keeper, keeper of the Privy Seal. And that'll be making some more money. Yeah, right now I'm only making 1600 and I was making 4000 So, yeah, let's definitely get some more money going. And I guess going forward, I should make sure that I don't lose Cordoba. I should prioritize that, like defending this over Granada, because I was training, I was building ships here. I was building something. I was building, I think, the improved farmland as well. So that's a thousand florins that's wasted. Yeah, that's a, it's a real bummer to lose all of that for sure. And in addition to all of the money that I was making as well, I was making just a ton of money. Yeah, trading income is only, it's, it's down to 853 and before it was like up to 1500 or something. So yeah, I need to get some more governors in here. I got some more boats so I can finally get up to the Black Sea, which is going to feel good. Not quite the Black Sea, no, but I did make it to the Sea of Mamara, so I can trade with the Byzantines here. And yeah, look at you go, Egypt, man. Yeah, you can take care of this garrison here in Nicaea. I mean, the Byzantines probably won't let you because they do have two stacks here in Constantinople. But honestly, I mean, you have three stacks here, so Egypt might actually just take care of this. Yeah, they have a lot of Gulen bodyguards. Well, they have a few. They have a few units. Yeah, yeah, they have, they have a lot. They have a lot of Gulen bodyguards. Huh. And the Byzantines do have the Varangian Guards. This is the best heavy infantry unit in the whole game. They're so hardcore. They're so, so hardcore. And I can't spy on them here. Yeah. That is that is fine. That is fine. Oh, yeah. They, so they lost roads. <laughs> oh, dear. The Byzantines. How funny. Not quite. The castle still is in their control, but the rebels hanging out in roads. Yeah. Well, I just think I found my new governor for Cordoba. This is not looking bad, too bad here. Four acumen, two command, you know, so he's on his way. He can become a good general someday, I suppose. And yeah, three dread, five piety. Loyalty is okay, so let's give him... Where is... yeah, Cordoba. And let's put taxes up to high, so 1451, and then give him this. Now we're looking at, yeah, 2018. Now let's give him this, the Lord Chamberlain, for two acumen. So putting him up to six. Yeah, two acumen and two loyalty. So what are we at right now? 2018 and then 2292. Not freaking bad. I will take it. Now, as far as the Keeper of the Privy Seal, what I was thinking is we've had this general down here who's been hanging out for a while now, Don Alfonso Valquez. He's, you know, three stars, four loyalty, which is, eh, it's a little bit on the worrisome side. Three piety and two acumen, nothing spectacular, right? But then if we look at the brave beyond belief, plus three valor, plus three morales, really, really good. So what I'm thinking of is giving him something that's going to give him more loyalty, more acumen, and more command. Ta-da! This is perfect. So yeah, let's do that. Let's say, not you, let's make sure it's the right guy. You. Yeah, I like that. Give it to him. He's up to four stars now, not bad. He's starting to look okay now. And three acumen, you know, so nothing nothing crazy, but you know, good general, good general now. So yeah, come at me, all my heads. You wanna fight? Come at me. I got just the guy for you. Otherwise though, let's see. I think going forward, I can start building this second tier spear maker, uh, spear maker's workshop here in Castile. So I can get, was it the, oops, I didn't mean to do that. It's gonna be the feudal sergeants, correct? Yes, it is. So that's gonna be really good for me here. Other than that though, I think I'm still waiting on, see these these, these uh, castle buildings take so long to build. The keeps like take, you know, it's a, it's a tier two castle building. It takes like eight years, I think. Is it eight years? Yeah, it takes eight freaking years, man. It's so long. That's so that's so long. Oh dear. Like a tier two castle building in Shogun takes five turns. And in this it takes eight. So it's just it's it feels like a long wait for sure. Yeah. But you know what? It's uh it's gonna be worth it because that's gonna open up a whole realm of troop producing facilities that I can start building. So I have my emissary on his way. He's working his way through the ports of Palmer, uh, Palmer, Palmerania. And he's going to be coming down here to talk to the Elmhead King, 
hopefully once and for all to try to sort this thing out and hopefully we can get an alliance, a ceasefire, and then an alliance with the Almohads now that they're kicked out of my territory yet again. I mean, for the third time, is it? Yeah, geez, oh, Pete's. Get a hint, guys. Get a hint. But other than that, things are looking pretty good. My economy will bounce back here. It already has bounced back quite a bit just by assigning those titles to those guys. So that's going to be looking pretty good. Other than that, though, yeah, just I'm basically just kind of waiting for this keep to be built here in Lyon so that I can build a church and then a chapter house so that I can build a crusade marker and then I can go on crusade to Antioch. But in the meantime, I do have to keep building up soldiers as well so that as soon as that crusade marker is built, I can immediately go overseas and take that province. But that is all going to have to wait until next time. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and thank you very much for watching. I've been Step, and this has been Medieval Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye.